In the previous lecture, we understand how to create this register action and this login action. Now, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can use this register action to register a new user using register component. So, let me just back to my register component. I'm going to open the register.js file and here I'm going to dispatch the register action. So, at the top, let's first import register action from the container action. So I'm going to first import a function register action from this action file inside this register component. Just for that, what we need, we need to call this register action function inside this handler function. So when we click on the register button, I want to call the register action. So just down here, I'm going to simply create a variable constant validate. You can specify any name to this variable. Here, I'm going to specify register action function. And inside that, as you know, I have a payload. Now payload is going to be this data and we're going to get this data from these input text boxes. Instead of passing all these values one by one and wasting time, I'm going to create a variable here, a constant variable user is equal to and here inside that I'm going to create this data. Username is going to be admin, then I'm going to specify email which is going to be admin at the rate gmail.com, then I'm going to specify here password is going to be admin123 and I'm going to specify password check is going to be admin123. Now instead of passing all these values inside these text boxes, I'm going to save some time and create this variable just for testing this register action and I'm going to pass this user right here. Later I'm going to get rid of this variable and pass this new user as a parameter to this register action. Just so that when I pass my values to this register action, this register action is going to return promises. So to get the promises, you need to specify here variable dot then method. Using then method, you will get the resolve promise and using catch method, you will get the rejected promise. Inside then, here I'm going to add callback function like this and pass data parameter to it. Inside this data parameter, I'm going to just print console.log and print my data parameter. In the catch, I'm going to return error message. So I'm going to say here error, pass here arrow function, and then I'm going to say here console.log and specify the error message, just like this. And at the end, let me command this console.log, just like this. Let me save this file. And as you know, we already specify values of these input text boxes to the register action. So instead of specifying anything inside these input text boxes, I'm going to just click on this register button. When I click on it, you will get this error message. Validate then is not a function. This is because if you open your service auth.service, here you can notice the register function will return void. So we need to return something from this register service. As you know, we have this axios and this axios is going to return the resolve promise or rejected promise. I want to get this response in my action. So we need to return the axios response. So before the axios, here don't forget to add return. Don't forget to do the same for this login as well. Here I'm going to say return. Let me save the file, reload it. Let me click on the register button again. I'm going to get the same error again. This time I'm going to have this error because you can notice here, I specify value to the first parameter of this register action. You can notice here, inside this action file, I have this payload. And to this payload, I specified here the user value. But what about this dispatch. I need to pass value to this dispatch function as well. So we can call the action. So inside this register at the top here, I'm going to import a hook called use dispatch. And I'm going to grab this from react redux. So from the react redux module, you need to grab the use dispatch hook. Just for that, just on here, I'm going to create a constant variable and specify here dispatch is equal to use dispatch. Just out of that, I'm going to use this dispatch and wrap that with this action type. So I'm going to say here dispatch in the parenthesis, I'm going to grab this register action and specify that here, just like this. Now let me save the changes, reload it. And now when I click on the register button, I'm going to have different error message. Now you will get this error because there are some restriction from accessing cross-origin HTTP request. So to solve this problem, we need to add a module called course inside the server. 
Chorus stands for Cross Origin Resource Sharing. It allows you to make a request from one website to another website in a browser, which is normally prohibited by another browser policy called the same origin policy. So I'm going to back to my website, open my terminal. Let me first stop the development server, clear the screen. And here I'm going to say npm i for install. And then I'm going to install a module called course. And I'm going to install this as a dev dependency. So I'm going to pass hyphen capital D. I'm going to use this module in my server. So I'm going to install this module as a dev dependency. So once you have this module, just close this terminal back to the server file. As you can see here inside the server folder, I have the server file. I'm going to open that and inside the server at the top here, I'm going to say constant course is equal to require course. Just out of that, you need to use that script just out of this express JSON. Here I'm going to specify app.use and inside that I'm going to call course. Save this file and now start your development server. So I'm going to open my terminal. Here I'm going to specify npm start. This will start my client and the server development server at the same time. Now, once I have my course, let me click on the register button and show you the result. Oops, I think I misspelled something in my code. Let me close the server, open the register. Yeah, right here. I just misspelled the spelling of email. Save this file, reload it. And now let me click on this register button. When I click on it, as you can see, I'm not going to have anything here. We will solve this problem, but let me first open my MongoDB Atlas. When I open my MongoDB Atlas in my collection, you can notice I have my data. I have the email, password, and the username. So you can notice using this register button, we can successfully register a new user in the MongoDB database. Now for practice, instead of using this variable, specify your own values inside these input text boxes and create a new user. In the next lecture, we'll look at how to add login action to this login component.